So basically this video is a more uncut version of the previous one where I compare, you know, my impression of Zach Heidi to his actual orchestrations. Zach shared the rest of the conversation over on his channel. So if you want to see our chat in full, you know, check out his part of the video as well. So what do you want me to play then? Um, you, you can play how you think I did my action one. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> it's probably gonna I'm be better scared. than mine. I'm not gonna get offended. <laughs> okay, here it goes. All right. Here's how I did mine. Uh, You were really close, dude. I think actually <laughs> your version is much closer to mine. You know, my actual orchestration. Well, that was one thing that was kind of funny. So like after I did like my orchestrations, then I would go to do yours and I was like, I would like change it dramatically. Cause I would be like, I don't know. I would just do it different. But then I, I mean, wondered that. Like, my version, I'll play it in a second, is actually clo closer to yours than my impression. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know version. what you mean. Because <laughs> I, I just thought you would go for a more epic kind of, you know, vibe with some Brahms and like percussion <laughs> and stuff. But I thought didn't. about it. <laughs> I mean, well, you, you pretty much got the like, I mean, I thought yours was super similar to mine. I did French horn for the lead. I did, um, you know, strings carrying the ostinato. Did a lot of those wind runs that you did. And like lots of, like way too many cymbals. I did way too many cymbals. But um, I was wondering what you did with brass for yours. For oh, your actual orchestration. Um, I don't remember how, I don't think I was terribly creative with it, but I did melody in the horns. Melody in the horns. I think I just kind of da 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 da, da for trombones just pushing out and then just had trumpets do counter melody. I was trying to get that, he had that like clashy harmony at the end. So I had the trombones carry that for the most part. Oh yeah, yeah, da, da, I had that. Yeah, that was pretty much okay. it. 12 French horn patch. Good to go. <laughs> you my brass. I think I, I I I was a little bit over dramatic <laughs> with your <laughs> impression. <laughs> so reaps and stuff. It sounds great. Your brass sounds really good. Particularly the trumpets. It's the same trumpets you have. I know. I think I gotta I gotta do a remix on mine. I struggle with getting them to sit in the room and still be bright. Uh I probably have over tweaked. No, I think I think yours sounds cool. It sounds much larger than mine because of the reverb in general, you know? I think you yeah. have a much longer tail. I think so. Yeah, I do, for sure. Is that Cinematic Studio Brass? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah, you use the Marcatos, right? A little bit. The only thing I don't like about the Marcatos is um, with really short stuff, sometimes you hear the, the end tail. Like, it's hard to do. Like this. You think it doesn't sound like the same as Spiccato. I mean, I can't play at all. Like I can't, like I can't play any of these stuff. To be honest, you plug it in. You do note input. 
I kind of slow it way down. I slow this like to like uh, it's actually my video. I keep you know kind of changing the tempo. Mm. I think I recorded this at half speed. Do you use very speed at all? I uh, I can't. I used to, but it kind of changes the pitch now for some reason. I don't uh, know. I know there's a couple very speed settings. So one of them is pitch related, but I I, I will do that sometimes too. Uh, if you have it on, for me, if I have it on speed only, that works. No, it doesn't for me. Huh? I sh uh, let me show you. I actually have it. It does act up in the beginning though for me. I have to like replay. It. You see? <laughs> yeah, mine. What do you, what um, tempo do you have that at? 140 and I actually I I recorded mine at 138 it's lower than yours yeah mine's at 140 you're right I um I just do the very speed at I think I don't go past negative 30 because I think if you get past like that amount I think it starts to like I think mine will probably act up too <laughs> You see, I, it's really weird. What are you getting, like repeated notes and stuff? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I actually I did hear the repeated notes. I don't think mine. Yeah, no, mine doesn't do that. Are you still on Rosetta? Yep. Maybe that's why. No, I had it before. Oh, then I don't one know. Of the updates, one of the previous updates. I don't know what they Maybe changed. it's like the UK version of Logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Walmart version of Logic. <laughs> um, um, all right, I'm going to pull up the... Uh, Want to do Adventure next? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'll be honest. The, the action one was uh, my least proud orchestration. So they're going to get progressively more proud. The mysterious one was a blast particularly enjoyed that i actually the mysterious one i had to give it a pass on my own and then record the video because i had literally no fucking idea what you would do <laughs> like oh yeah no clue i actually listened to a ton of your music <laughs> oh geez your <laughs> watch your videos and try to figure some things out i have no idea no um, idea come on um you can play yours first if you want my impression yeah so, I mean, there's a concept behind mine. Oh, I'm gonna get a backstory. I think what I thought you would do for the adventure one is basically like a long kind of build up to the end. <laughs> okay. And I thought you would use the choir, but um, I don't have the right samples for this, so I, can, I kind of use something else instead. <laughs> I tried to sneak it in at the end. You uh, cheated. I guess I'll play it. No. I exactly. Um, I know exactly load. why you thought I would do this. I'm sorry. I knew I'd like your orchestrations better than mine, dude. You uh, okay? So let me ask you a question. Did you did you do it this way because uh, was it a cantrip candles video? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear it. I can hear. It's funny that I know what you used as inspiration. Um, yes. You're pretty darn close. Uh, you're more creative than mine. Um, I didn't use percussion. You didn't. Not not that way. Not that way. If okay. I had, I guess, I suppose if I'd been composing it this way, I would have probably done that. Um, I'll play you mine. That's really cool. You're spot on about the choir though. I use the choir, I think exactly the spot that you had it come in. 
I was gonna do, I think if I had a, the right choir patch, I would have done something similar to what you have. I would have done something with strings and choir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really, I think I sometimes sub out choir when it comes to like those rising lines that I sub out choir instead of trumpets or I use them both. I don't know why. I don't know. It just felt like it's the, it's the, um, you would use choir for this kind of chords, the mm -hmm. kind of, you know, with this kind of wandering kind magic. of magic, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, I think it feels magical. Yeah. I, did I use a mark tree? I think I might have even used a mark tree at the end, too. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I used a mark tree at the end as well. At the end, I used it at the beginning. <laughs> I had to do that, too. Kind of close to what I did though, because I did give it a, a kind of a pulse because I had harp and pizzicato. I kind of struggle oh. with like leaving things without any sense of movement. So for harp, I had this. Oh. Kind of wish I'd done that because that's really cool. I mean, you're you're definitely you're you're locking into this type of music I like. So. I don't know. I just thought you would use, but like, I tend to see your music a little bit more percussive and maybe like a little bit more groovy than mine. I think and I, I think you would go with like um more lush kind of thing. Yeah, I think that that's. I think it's a partially a bad habit of mine too, because I sometimes will just layer percussion just because. But then no, I, it's cool. It's not a bad habit. I like the groove stuff. I do like groove a lot. When I'm doing my own um, cinematic stuff, I really like to have some groovy element to it. I mean, groovy. I didn't, <laughs> didn't use too much percussion. I think I can solo them. I love what you do with the percussion. <laughs> I do love tubular bells. So with this that nag. literally sounds like my like a my a percussion track off of my music. So that's yeah. Yeah, I didn't get this though. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I think, think you I you won the assignment more than me on that. That sounds more like me than what I wrote. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if I had anything like terribly interesting in the. I think I used ensemble patches just to get through a lot of this stuff too. These are my strings for for mine, the one I did. Yeah, I had, um, I tried to get, he had that part in the piano that went do, 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 do. Yeah. So I tried to just have that. I think I used maybe harp to double, or maybe I used like clarinet and bassoon to kind of like push that out too. Oh, I did do that double, double actually. On yours. I oh, think. did you? Ah, oh, no, it's a flute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait, no, I did that. I did that. You're, you're my um, my uh, wins. I think I used English horn in the beginning. English horn is, and violin. Yeah, kind of a uh, broader, broader sound. I mean, I think for yours, I've used winds for the melody and some accents. Yeah. I mean, I, took, I was lazy. I took the orchestration from one of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, that's what I, I tend to use winds to carry melodic stuff. I like, I don't know why. I just, winds are just really distinct color wise. I just really, really like using winds. I'm very lazy with using uh, melody and brass. Mm. It just that, that brassy sound, I, I find it hard to balance, it's, mm. uh, except for, yeah, obviously, if it's like a big, powerful thing. I don't think of your music that way. <laughs> what What do you mean? Like, like I would, I think of your music as like French horns and trumpets in octaves and just playing loud. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty accurate. I mean, but I guess what I mean is I tend to just use them for loud dynamics as opposed to uh, like, yeah, yeah, uh, although I'm, I'm getting more out of my comfort zone and I'm using trombones a lot more than I used to. Like, because trombones yeah. can be really helpful for quiet passages too. Yeah, I mean, I don't use trombones a lot. I tend to use bassoons, like yeah. for what people normally use trombones. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Me too. I just, I don't know. I think part of it is a programming thing that mm. like, it's we, easier. We, you tend to, yeah, exactly. You tend to default, like my brass is the hardest to play in agile stuff. Mm. So yeah, I yeah. just tend to not use it for agile stuff, you know? Whereas like winds are super, these are super playable for agile things. So I tend to use them all the time for that. Yeah, I agree. Like in general, even like, you know, lines, like I like, you know, I, I use Cinematic Studio Brass a lot. Yeah. But like it doesn't have the low latency mode. So <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I think the they'll, they'll get there though. I, I can't remember. Did you get the patch update for Cinematic Studio Strings? Yes, I did. Because it, it is a lot more... Like, particularly the Mercado legato is, like, badass. I really, really like that you can do these kind of, like, um... That's, like, so crazy cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we were talking about that. I was like, I really like that figure, that... Yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't do that before and have it sound <laughs> good, you know? So. But yeah, I mean, like, not having that patch kind of, like, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I feel lazy. I grab some other instrument instead because I don't. I don't really feel like making programming a line for yeah horns and. I mean, I do use sample modeling a lot. They're great. Like yeah. particularly the harmony stuff, like this one, for example. In your impression, actually, you can't do that with any other library. Yeah, yeah. Those blends, they just don't work. You mm -hmm. know. I use infinite brass actually sometimes for really agile stuff. It's not as like roomy sounding, but the trumpets, you know. It's like very pretty movable. <laughs> that sounds like a trumpet flubbing something. <laughs> um, shorts though. For the shorts, it's not as... It's the same with sample modeling, it sounds... Yeah, it's like almost exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> that was really odd. <laughs> Wait, you can record? Yeah. Oh, man. I, you can't do that with sample modeling. It's one instrument... Oh, like there's no split. It won't even let you just do just like non legato. No. Nope. Oh, yeah. No, infinite will let you do non legato, but it won't. It won't do polyphonic legato. I have a a sustain one. That's this one, and then I just have the trumpet legato. I mean, it, it's not bad at all. Like I do use it sometimes for quick stuff. Um, the horn isn't like as powerful as I would love. Like the horn is just kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it sounds good. It's just not. It doesn't doesn't but sound like cross, a, an ensemble. Uh, I think what's good about this is the layers. You know, the dynamic layers. There's so many. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. You can be very expressive and it's still like, you don't- Do you like you you Niente can't... in yeah. your, in, yeah, I do too. That, cause I would rather, I'd rather just be able to use modulation to get it to go down to zero than have to, you know, putz around with yeah. expression. You don't get Niente with sample modeling though. Oh, uh, that's annoying. Yeah. You know, there really is a workaround. Um, I, I do this in my libraries. You can add a scripter in Logic. I don't know if you've ever done this. Um, I use scripters, but I don't, I don't, how do you do it with this? I do it with Cinebrass. You add a modifier that's, mm -hmm. um, you assign the mod wheel. You reassign the mod wheel to be, uh, CC seven. 
Okay. To make it volume. And then you scale it. So basically your mod wheel is now controlling both mod as well as volume. And you can uh, adjust how much. The only want... problem is like the louds are, it's like you lose a lot of the quiets because it doesn't, you know, pump it up yeah. volume wise. Um, I mean, like I have um, like an automation controller in front, in front of me and I'm messing with the, um, I'm, I always play with vibrato modulation and expression anyway. Mm -hmm. But we, I play with three fingers. Yeah. So you may so as well just same, use, but it I don't use it that way. I don't use it for sample modeling. Cause it's like, like if the moment you start messing with volume, I find like all the blends are just mm -hmm. wrong. They just don't yeah. blend. The instruments don't blend anymore with each other. And it's just like, there's yeah. no point for me. It's I, I really like I love the agility, but yeah, I struggle with the the mix part of it. It's really, really specific instances that I use it. But I wish I wish oh man, if Cinemax Studios series ever gets to a point where it plays like that, I think it'll be unstoppable. And I, I, I do think they're getting there because the winds are pretty good. The strings just got a lot better. I think the brass is really the one that if they can step up the latency of it. I mean, the latency though for the str for strings, like the low latency mode for strings is still, it Swap. feels like it's more, it has more latency than the winds. It do I agree, I agree. I must, it must just be because of the way that strings handle uh, slurs and legato lines. I, I, I imagine that's that's gotta be all it is because there's really, no, like even with the winds, you can't get like, you know, you get like a portamento, you know? Yeah. Honestly, so. I'm thinking about switching to some perf like performance stuff, like performance samples or something like that. Yeah. Like I can't be bothered anymore. Yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. Sometimes I'll use, um, like I use a flottest strings to just get ensemble stuff because it does polyphonic legato. Like this yeah. is a flottest mixed. Man, that sounds so good. Jesus. You know? That's a flottest? Uh-huh. I, I used I did mix it pretty heavily, but this one doesn't sound so great. But but it, because it does on uh, polyphonic. Oh, it's pretty amazing that it can do that. <laughs> I wish I could play like that. I can't improvise like that with virtual well, instruments. That's my problem, though, man. That's a, that's because I can do that. Sometimes I don't think hard enough. So I'll play like that, and then I usually have to do a lot of deleting and undoing because I'm like. So do you like improvise a lot in your? No. I I feel like I improvise so much that I don't know what it means to not do that. Like. Oh. Like in other words, I don't I I don't like game plan probably as much as I should. Like I'm assuming your process is more like you actually sit for a second and think about what you're gonna do. Like I, I know the parts. I sing. I can sing the part. Like I know what the parts are going to sound like in my yeah. head, and I kind of like if I have to come up with a melody, because I suck at playing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I should practice. I mean, I know. No, but I, I think that that's. I'm trying to get a little closer to that, uh, because I'm happier with my stuff when I can do that. Usually, that is a retrospective part of the process for me that I'm playing ideas because I'm not sure what I want, and then something clicks, and then everything else falls into place like a puzzle. It's like, oh, yeah. that was what I wanted, and now that means I have to simplify the roles of all these instruments a little bit, you know? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like there should, like, it should be maybe something in between, like, because I spend way too much time. You know, like, I waste a ton of time just trying things out and just, you know being frustrated because things don't work <laughs> there's probably no shortcuts you know? i guess it's like you yeah because you could start i guess the alternative like you might start with what you think is a game plan not do any improv start on the game plan realize it's wrong so yeah, there's yeah. probably no way around like i used to think there was like a silver bullet for being able to just orchestrate super quick but i, I don't i think everybody kind of messes around till they find something that they like yeah I mean, sometimes it just starts over, you know? Yeah, me too. Me too. And like, it's better actually, usually. Now that we're saying this, like with your adventure one, I think I changed like the plan a couple of times. I, as I said, 
can't remember exactly the process, but I think I started with like an idea of trying something with strings and choir and just it didn't work because it didn't have the right patches and mm -hmm. and and ended up doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, I usually I, I will say I've gotten a lot better at hitting delete. Like I can recognize a lot quicker than I used to if something's not working. I used yeah. to just plow through it and then it you know, be like three hours into the process, I'd be like, I have to delete it. Whereas now it'll be like, I kind of know pretty quickly, like 10 minutes in, 15 minutes in, I'm like, I, we got to try something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll pull up the- The tricky one. The tricky one. All right, let's see. Do I have yours? I actually have two separate sessions for this because mine is a mess. So I don't know. I actually, I will say, I love the way I did yours. Yeah. Yeah. I they really like, like the way I did yours. I, they're pretty similar. Like, I I think you, you you took more liberties for the orchestration than I did. There's no way you're going to guess mine because you don't know. May, I don't know. Maybe you might. You know, I'm a guitarist and I like weird stuff. So <laughs> when I did yours, I was like, I wish I'd done mine this way because it's, it, it's almost more like the way that I would do it. I feel bad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I over orchestrate. I get it. <laughs> no, not for that. Did you throw in a drum beat? No, I was tempted though. No, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a drum beat for this. You wouldn't. No. Jesus, I did do a groove. Did you? <laughs> kind of with some weird stuff I heard you doing in the past. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. As I'm I played. excited now. Jesus. I'm nervous. No, don't be nervous. <laughs> I know the one you use for this. You use electronics. Was that, was that, um, that sounds like something I did for saving throw. Was that like, um, Dark Lanterns or something? Or, uh, I don't know. East I Texas University? Do... Yeah, this, this sounds know. like something I did for a D&D &D show. I've seen you doing some stuff, like, in a video where you use the tremolo on, like, some kind of white noise thing. <laughs> so, basically, that was <laughs> my building thing. I built on this kind of groove. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, actually used, I think, the same uh, instruments to lead mine throughout the piece. I used English horn at the uh, uh, for the, the whole first half. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. This is mine. Thanks, man. I really like this one. I honestly didn't think you would go with something orchestral. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think that you actually... I think you arranged these the way that I would actually do them. If they were my pieces. I think I treated this as if I'm, I still, in the back of my head, knew it was somebody else's music and was trying to do it the way I thought they wanted it. To my style. But I actually think, like, I feel like you did a... I feel like you'd get the A for the homework assignment because I feel like you did it the way that I would really do it. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it's complete. Sounds completely different, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I did English horn as the lead. You're right about that. I did. Um, I think you had pizzicato taking the the bass, right? No, it's no. like a, a synth Cole. thing. Oh, we had Coleño <laughs> stuff with some bass drops and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um. I do have harp uh, carrying the the little ostinato pattern. Oh um, yeah, that I just have it quieter. 
at least that I got. I use your harp actually. <laughs> oh really? I think I I did too. Because <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, it's, for sure he's gonna use that. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the Samantha Ballard harp that's available yeah, yeah, on ZachHeady yeah. com? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> like for sure. I have his VST, so. I'm like 50% of the way, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy? For all users, all people watching this video, there's a 20% discount. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that I was going to do what you did at the end of yours, where you pulled the strings up the octave. Mm. I I was going to do that, and then I was, I don't remember why I didn't. I think I got on myself. I was like, that's not what the arrangement did. But that's what I would have done. I mean, basically, like in mine, there's no orchestral instruments. In in <laughs> your, than, oh, your your impression of me? Yeah. Other than like harp and Celeste carrying the main arpeggio thing, and I did a pickup. Because... I do, I do octave doubles on harp and Celeste all the yeah. time. And I had a marimba, I think. You know what I. For a piece like that, I would totally do um, uh, piano taking the low octave. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I didn't. Because it, it adds just like, I, I might even go down for the super low. Because for me, when you add that in there, it's like, where's- What do where's... I have here on the piano? I have a piano as well. Even if I did it on, um, like, it's not going to work for mine because it's too, too romantic, but do you imagine with a drum beat, you know, just like, I get that from, um, Massive Attack. It's, I don't know if very, you know Massive Attack. it's like very impress, 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 how do you say? Impressionistic. Yeah. Yours is the one I did for you was even more so. Really? <laughs> yeah, I did yours. After I did yours, I was like, this sounds like a like a Rachmaninoff piece. I think people have different orchestration preferences, and that's part of what makes the sound. Yeah, sure. You know? Like... There's no right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Sometimes I, I fall into that trap. I'm like, oh, I got to utilize the entire orchestra because that's what you do. But then I'm like, eh, you know? Like, I've had many times where um, I've had to... I'll have, like, trumpets in something because I feel like trumpets need to be in there just to yeah. add push and then like you know i'll get a note back from a client and they're like this feels too heroic and i'm like damn it. i think it's, it's the even, trumpets it's even trickier if you're doing things live yeah you yeah get the money worth you know <laughs> like true yeah that's like, true I don't, you don't want the players to be sitting around mm -hmm. too much and, and you think about that when you're working in a daw too i think if you know yeah. orchestration you're oh i haven't used trumpets in a while yeah yeah i, mean, I, like, I fall into that Honestly, there's some instruments I could, I could just not use at all. I could remove from my template. Delete out, yeah. Like, I don't use trumpets very much, for example. Like, mm -hmm. I tend to just not use trumpets. Yeah. Except for maybe, I don't know. Like, if I'm doing something that is a little bit more hyped and whatever. Yeah. But that as well, like, it kind of tends to date the music a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or oboes as well. I feel like oboe is tricky. Like it's, it's a bit like trumpets for woodwinds. It sounds like Mozart. Yeah, it starts to get like a really old, early classical sound. I know what you mean. Like like two, I feel like two oboes is too much, you know? Yeah. Like if I were, to, I would probably have to have a custom ensemble, you know, with just one oboe mm -hmm. or maybe, I don't know. I double like oboe with English instead. horn sometimes. Yeah. Uh, cause you just get a little more body from English horn than with oboe. I use, I use English horn way more than oboe. Me too. Actually, um, I talked to Tim Simonek, who's the, the orchestrator for Giacchino stuff. Mm. I don't remember if we, maybe we talked about this at one point, but he told me that he never has two oboes in unison ever. Yes. Yeah. He said that there, the inton, you get intonation issues and it's, uh, if anything, you would do oboe and English horn or oboes and octaves. I mean, like Williams does a lot of stuff with all the winds playing in unison. And yeah. that I do a lot, like two oboes, two clarinets and two flutes in unison. Sometimes I, even you have enough. I think there's enough instruments in there where any intonation issues get 
blurred. Yeah. You know, and it kind of, you know, it almost sounds like a, like a horn, you know, like a French yeah. horn. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. The beginning of um, Harry Potter. I, yeah, I yeah. remember I, I picked up on that. I was like, I could, I always thought it was a French horn. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like English horn and clarinet and like alto flute or, so, or like just flute. Yeah. I can't remember. I think I use alto like, flute a ton too. I think it's like English horn, bassoons, bass clarinet, clarinet. Is it bassoons? Doing like an octave lower, you mean, or is it at unison? No, no, unison. I think it's like English horn, bassoons, and clarinet in unison, and then like maybe alto flute as well. But also there's um there's also like a regular flute on like an like an octave higher. Oh yeah, you're right because the bassoon adds the horny. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And and totally, yeah, flute up the octave makes but not but so it's quiet enough where you don't actually like pick up I hate when people do Yeah, right on. <laughs> they did that in the later Harry Potter movies and it drove me mad. But that note is tricky, I get that. Or people do it. That's cool, I like that. I like that too, yeah. <laughs> I dig that. Uh, my favorite is that the, the whole step. The original is the one that I really like. Ah, uh, that's so cool. I don't like. <laughs> I used to teach piano to like nine year olds and everybody wanted to learn Harry Potter and everybody played it differently and wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Always to... on that spot. Like Williams has some very weird intervals. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame them. I mean it's it is a really strange melody. Yeah. But Yeah. Well but yeah, I mean like words in unison they're great. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I gotta. I really gotta get back to score studying, man, because I feel like my toolkit is getting really stale, I feel and the I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, I, I don't. I need some more tools. Also, like on tight deadlines, if you don't, if you don't have like a new orchestration that you really want to try or integrate, you just default to what you've done, you know. Because all my my Unless projects are you know tight deadlines. I'm just like. Unless the client really doesn't like your music. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. To try stuff, you know. It's tough when you know what works. That's what's tough. When you know what works, it just becomes a default. Like a 12 French horn patch and ensemble strings always works for my powerful yeah. action stuff. So it's like hard to challenge yourself to do something new when you have a tight deadline and you just have to get it done, you know? But yeah, I need I know. some new tools. I know what you mean. I had this recently, you know, like yeah. this client, did, they didn't necessarily like the music. They wanted me to try something that was entirely different. And I was like, what the fuck am I going to do now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, but this is no. how I do it. <laughs> can, we, can we take a, like, a, like a step in a completely different direction? Sure. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What am I going to do? Let's orchestrate this differently. Yeah, it's it's uh, it is it is tough. I think that's the whole. I, I spent so long trying to get faster, you know, and now I I've had to sort of like rein it back a little bit. Where like if you can get if you get too fast, then you don't you don't give enough time to think and try new yeah. options and experiment, you know. But I do find for me my best method has been. A, a, like five minutes even of score study before I start work in the morning mm. and then get a lesson out of that and then actively try and implement that into the client work. Yeah. That, that For me, that's what works the best. I mean, like, I kind of reference vaguely to, like, the provided files, whatever, you know. Yeah. I, refer I Every now and then I go back and reference it. I just... I try not to go too much into the details, otherwise I would copy it. Yeah, me too. I do too. have that tendency, you know. Yeah, I but do to too. get the vibe, the overall vibe, some of the things that you that kind of stand out and make it 
like particular, you know. I think but it's I, foolish it, not to, because if if they yeah. if they already like what's there, uh, I think it, it. I mean, we are providing a service, so it's like at the end of the day, like you you probably just wasting time if you're not paying attention to what they're saying. You they know, like. like some people are very vague. Like yeah. I'm working with this director. She's like she has like she lets she lets me do basically try anything like sh no direction like zero do you like that uh yeah but <laughs> it's it's tough yeah it's tough because i don't know like there's different there's several there's so many different ways you could do the same thing and mm -hmm. like yeah. it's a, like this this I think we might need to scrub this for YouTube because I I, I don't I'm I don't think I can say. Oh, should I just hit the? <laughs> I guess we I guess we got everything we needed anyway for YouTube, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. I, I can hit the stop button on it. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll have our little outros later or something. Let me close this as well. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna close OBS as well.